Hello, my name is Jeff Schneid with Diversified Fall Protection. In this video, we're going to talk about the three keys to a fall protection plan. We're going to talk about the fall protection solution, we're going to talk about the rescue, and we're going to talk about the recertification. In the fall protection solution, there's two basic solutions. It's going to be either be a fall arrest or a fall restraint situation. Fall arrest means an individual can get to an edge and fall over the edge, but their fall will be arrested by the fall protection system before they contact the next surface below. A fall restraint system identifies the fact that the individual can get to the edge, but they, the PPE or the equipment that they're utilizing will keep them from going over the edge. PPE, which identifies the personal protective equipment, is extremely important in your plan to make sure that the proper equipment is being used. All too often, people feel as though that lanyards are the standard solution in any fall protection situation. When back-mounted retractables, which would basically be a back-mounted SRL, known as a self-retracting lifeline, and overhead SRLs are used in many different cases to minimize fall distance. A standard lanyard is typically six feet in length and then has an additional three and a half feet of an absorption pack built into it. So in the event of a fall, the person is going to fall that six feet plus the additional three and a half feet as the shock pack deploys, adds to the overall length. In previous videos, we talk about fall distance and the importance to make sure that the distance you fall does not exceed the clear distance to the surface below. In the rescue situation, it is very important that your rescue plan coincides with a detailed description of how your fall protection plan is to be used, when it's to be used, how it's to be used, and who is to use it. The rescue plan identifies the equipment that will be required. Keep in mind, in a rescue situation, you have between seven and 15 minutes to rescue an individual that is hanging from a harness, whether this person is unconscious or conscious. The other part of a rescue plan that a lot of people will look at is they think call 911, that being an acceptable solution. In OSHA's eyes, in any other organization's eyes, 911 is not an acceptable solution because you do not know the time frame that your local EMS department is going to be able to get to you on time. Another area that people look at is they, if they have man lifts on their premises, they utilize the man lift as part of the solution. That is also not an acceptable solution because you do not know where the orientation of or the location of that man lift is in relationship to where the fall has occurred. So in a large plant situation, the man lift could be a half a mile away from where the fall occurred, and a man lift moves at a very slow rate, and you'll never be able to reach the individual within the acceptable 7 to 15 minutes. Within a rescue plan, it's extremely important that this information be documented, and it's very important that the people that are a part of your first responder team are trained. And training should be done on periodic uh, intervals to make sure that everybody is still up to date of what the plan reads and that they're also trained to the new equipment or the existing rescue equipment being used. The third part of a good rescue or fall protection plan is the recertification. Although the system when it was put in place has all the original documentation identifying the engineering calculations to go along with it and also has the, the documentation identifying the individual that have been trained on the proper use of the system, Recertification goes beyond that. In the event of a fall occurring on any fall protection system, it is a requirement per OSHA that the system be taken out of service and has to be recertified by a qualified company. Also in the recertification, let's say that a fall did not occur, but the system is an outdoor system or an indoor system, either way, and the system should be looked at at a minimum of one time a year. Although, OSHA does not require recertification of systems. It references to follow the manufacturer's recommendation. And most manufacturers recommend that their systems be recertified on an annual basis. Also keep in mind, this not only goes toward the system that's been installed, but also the PPE, or the personal protective equipment, that is used on that system should also be annually recertified. 
Again, we cannot stress enough to make sure when you're working with your fall protection plan that you're working with the proper partner to make sure that this company that you're working with identifies the type of system, the type of rescue equipment that is to be used, and how to put together a recertification plan. In closing, when developing your fall protection plan, we urge everyone to make sure that they're working with a professional organization to make sure that their plan coincides with all OSHA regulations and ANSI specifications. We further urge everyone to be working with the proper partner because please keep in mind, safety is a culture, it's not a purchase.